Hello folks, welcome back to We Love Music. If you're just joining us, that was Andy Mineo's new hit, Paganini, featuring Cannon and KB, kicking off our throwback, throwdown segment of the show, where we feature artists who've made courageous ventures into making or remaking historical artists in their work. Music is such an interesting part of our lives. I don't know anyone who can honestly say they don't enjoy music. Even if they don't listen to it recreationally, they can hear it in movies and TV shows. I watched an entire independent film before where there was no musical accompaniment. The storyline was great. I mean, there was teen pregnancy and an abusive boyfriend. Not that either of those are really good things. But, I mean, the story was awesome. There were people coming into their true selves, like a true American dream story. But it was so boring. I did not realize how much music really spruces up life until I watched that show. Today, our throwback throwdown segment will be bringing back the work of Niccolo Paganini, a legend if there ever was one. He is known as one of the best violinists of all time. People believe that his fast fingers and limber playing were a direct consequence from, drum roll please, him selling his soul to the devil. Yeah, you heard me right, the devil. It's earned him the name of the devil's violinist. He was definitely a show-off, sometimes breaking his own guitar, his violin strings, sorry. He did play the guitar too, but he will break his violin strings and finish the piece still with whatever strings he had left just to put on a good show. Whether it be the ladies desiring the flashy star or the religious provoked by spiritual fear, Niccolo Paganini often found himself the source of being mobbed when he walked the streets. Talent like that, folks, does not come without intense training. Although Paganini's innate talent helped him quite a bit, he was also taught influenced by some of the best composers. Initially, he was taught by his father, Antonio Paganini, but soon after, he, he outgrew his dad and he moved on to train with some more experts. Even as he grew older, he said his own intense practice regimen that some say consisted of 15-hour practice sessions. I mean, if you think about it, 15 hours, that's a really long time, like before the sun comes up to after the sun sets. Um, so that probably goes along with his legendary skills. But 
it doesn't matter. He practiced. The man practiced. So those of you out there who really want to be great, to be ready to spend hours working at it, learning and perfecting your craft, success does not just fall into laps. Paganini first began performing at the age of 12. His first performance was done at a church, and he continued doing church performances after that. Later on, he began touring the continent of Europe, of those who don't know. He toured Europe, and he accrued mass amounts of fame, so much so that he won the attention of nobility. Napoleon's sister, Princess Eliza Bacchiocchi, loved his work so much that he was appointed the position of esteemed court violinist. If that weren't enough, the Pope, even the Pope loved Paganini. The Pope gave Paganini the Knights of Golden Spur, despite his demonic dalliances. And I'm not even sure if he really had demonic dalliances, but either way, he was influenced by somebody, by some people, everybody, all great people. Well, everybody. Not You don't have to be great to be influenced by someone. And Paganini definitely was influenced by some people. But then that does leave the question, who was the first great one to inspire the first great one? Uh, Yeah, I'm not going to go into that, guys. We'll talk about that another time. But anyway, Paganini was influenced by Auguste Frederick Durand, a Franco-Polish violin virtuoso who had a reputation for showmanship that he clearly passed on to our musical focus of today. Paganini also had a buddy relationship with a singer, Antonio Bianchi, who gave birth to his son. Well, I guess that's a little more than a buddy relationship, if I say so myself. But yeah, she definitely influenced his life as well as his son. And Paganini has composed numerous works in addition to his notorious playing. He often performed his own pieces for audiences, some of which include his 24 Caprices, 12 sonatas for violin and guitar, six violin concertos, and six quartets. He is known as the father of heavy metal. His most famous work took over 10 years to write. 24 caprices, his 24 caprices are known for their fast finger, flashy positioning and switching and double stops and trills and plucking. It's a lot going on in there. We're going to listen to one right now. Um, it's no wonder Annie Minio took such interest in this legend. We've heard the inspired piece. Now let's hear from the muse. Then the phone lines will be open for comments. Do you feel like a Paganini? <laughs> 